I always felt that not necessarily that there was something special about me, but there's, I always felt as though I wanted to share something, but I felt I had nothing to share. As a makeup artist, I have mothers come in with their children and first thing they say is almost as an apology, my child's hair is so thick. Or as a, a person, an adult like me would sit down and they'll pol apologize. We're so comfortable with the entanglement of pain that we're not even looking for real solutions outside of a, a tutorial on YouTube. Generation after generation after generation, we have taken into almost folklore. It's, it's mm. what we do, but why do we do it? Hello, Angela, how are you? I'm really well, Paige, thank you for having me. Long time coming. I should have really had you many, many moons ago, but to be fair, I'm glad that I waited because now that we can do this video setup, I think it's just a lot more fancy, a lot more professional. What I want to do is basically understand the real importance of Afro hair education, right? And I know that that is something that you have really invested your lifeblood in. So why did you decide to be an Afro hair educator? That is a really surprisingly complex question to answer so um okay. let's start from where it really started to happen so 2018 mm -hmm. uh 2017 i had my 50th birthday okay and i decided that with various things going pear shaped in my life mm -hmm. i decided that i was going to treat myself to a tony robbins seminar and you're thinking right but what has that got to do with Afro hair, just like very remote, right? But he yeah. asked this question, what is it you can do to help the world? What, what can you give? And as part of my growing process, because I just thought personal development, it's time I understood about myself, blah, 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 blah. With this question, I thought, well, what is it about me? There is mm. this question that, that came with me from childhood, basically, it's like, why am I here? All the things that I went through, why am I going through this? Yeah what why and then at that point after I did the seminar I realized the one thing that I had that would actually help other people if they mm -hmm. knew what I knew would be Afro hair care why not that that's where I put as you said in the introduction my life I yeah. put my life into that and I was determined that when I had my children mm -hmm. they would not have the same experiences that I had and then Further on down the years, uh, I went from being an office worker to being a makeup artist. And mm. then my colleagues were asking me, oh, I don't know how to do Afro hair. How do, can you show me? Can you show me? Okay. Back in the 2000s, when I trained, I was in year 2000. Yes, I'm that old. So oh, please, Angela. You're fresh. <laughs> Look at your face. I'm glad we're doing video now. Everyone can see. <laughs> um, at that time, it was mainly braids and such forth. There wasn't very many yeah. naturalistas out there. Um, but when I look back on it, after being asked that question in 2018, 2017, I realized that I always had this and mm. it was, you know, like, I'm not highly religious, I'm spiritual, Sure. but my father brought me up in that way. And it's, it stayed with me. It's kind of like my, my anchor of, of how mm. to be. And there was this part in the Bible that says you don't hide your light under a bushel, right? You don't know that bit or you do know that bit? No, but it just hit my spirit. <laughs> ah, well, there you go. I always felt that, not necessarily that there was something special about me, but there's, I always felt as though I wanted to share something, but I felt I had nothing to share. Yeah. And when some people may re uh, resonate with this, when you look back on what you've gone through to where you are now, yeah. Everything, all those painful experiences that you went through was you going through training. Yeah. For me to be able to do what I do now and share with other people. So, so I guess <laughs> that's why I decided to become an ed hair educator because it's something I knew. And mm -hmm. my children fell asleep when I did their hair. My husband falls asleep when I do his <laughs> hair. It's like, <laughs> why not? Yeah. Um, so the question was, well, how do you teach somebody that? Yes. Yeah. That's important. And it's important because I feel that, and I don't know who this is really targeted at, but me personally, I feel that if I'm really good at something, I almost shouldn't brag. 
or I should kind of keep it to myself because it comes off conceited or, and I don't know if that's a black woman thing. I don't know if that's just like a general human thing, but it's something I've noticed like my mum has there <laughs> as well, where it's very much like, oh, I have to kind of just like keep this to my friends and family. But if I go mm. out and I say I'm an expert in X, Y, Z, it's almost like you're opening yourself up to scrutiny for people to say, well, are you? But I yeah. think when you have a mission and the impact of the mission is bigger than the fear of not doing it for fear of what looking silly or not this one, when that's larger, it yes. fights through. And I think exactly. your, your mission is too big. <laughs> exactly that. Uh, everything you've mentioned, I had to overcome. And going back to the Tony Robbins seminar now, the mm. whole point of personal development was stopping you, not stopping you, letting you look at the things that were stopping you and understanding that they are mindsets, they are other people's conditionings being put on you when you were a child and were, had no idea what was right and what was wrong and just taking it all on board. And next thing you know, it's not some, what somebody else is saying. Mm. Suddenly it's you, you're the one saying this thing. So no, I, I totally disagree that there are people, hmm. There is boasting and then yes. there is someone who has something and like you say, have a mission. It, it's yeah. bigger than me. I've yeah. seen so many people suffering. I, I, as a makeup artist, I have mothers come in with their children and first thing they say is almost as an apology, my child's hair is so thick. Or as a, a person, an adult like me would sit down and they'll pol apologize. When I'm working in, in TV and film, they'll sit down and they'll apologize for their hair. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> right? And the more I decided to pursue this thing and try and break it down and how I'm, I'm going to share this mm -hmm. with somebody else, the more I realized I couldn't just leave it as the practical. It had to also be spiritual and it had to also be logical and it had to also be yeah. mindset because uh, I have to undo all the stuff that we the conditionings up, the conditioning the programming mm -hmm. insidious programming and as a makeup artist who works in advertising who works in tv and film who um is one of the people who creates that perfect image that you yeah. see on screen that you set your standard by. It's actually a lot of yeah? pressure, Jesus. Right, and most of it is unconscious. We, we are not yeah. aware, we're not aware. You know, growing up in the, um, I was born in the 60s, so my visual memory is more early 70s. Mm -hmm. The women who either had their hair relaxed, or um, had it in some big curly fashion, but basically was definitely not, you know, 4C. Definitely yes. not 4C. Defo not. <laughs> Defo not. And if I saw it, it was uh, black power, perfect Afro. Yeah. And picked out to perfection. Of, picked out to perfection, but also associated with militancy. I mean, yeah, that reminds me of the way that um, when I went to Jamaica recently and I went to, it's like my step-grandma's house. She'd never seen me with locks. She did not like it because she said it reminded her of the Rastafari religion. And right. And it, why is that, that connotation? That was the other thing, the other influence I had, Bob Marley. Yeah. And his dreads were not those beautiful little things that we see nowadays. No. <laughs> they were naturally forming you know, spiritual, heartfelt uh, extensions of what he believed. Mm -hmm. But still, it came with the idea that they were either people who took drugs or they were layabouts, mm -hmm. they were delinquents in some shape or form. Yeah. So anything natural had this uh, undesirable connection. Yeah, it did. Right? Um, so it's like, where do we go? I what thought disconnected from it. A hundred percent. It's hmm. sad, and it. I felt like when I found you at the Project Embrace event, where we were discussing the issues with discrimination in the workplace, especially when it comes to hair care. 
I just remembered I was learning about your story um, with your mother and about the nuances in your childhood that then led you to have to go on this like big life journey and discover yourself and discover how to love yourself with your hair as it is. And I've been through something similar. I know a lot of black people have. But the concept of education feels very new. It feels so new in 2023. I don't honestly think it's a normalized thing yet. In the same way, I don't think that people going to a trichologist is normalized yet. So it's You're almost right. like we're so comfortable with the entanglement of pain that we're not even looking for real solutions outside of a, a tutorial on YouTube. You're right. And it's sad. And that also comes to our programming. It's now, you know, I think we're tipping into the, the area of um, ancestral trauma. Yeah. When you think about it, you know, and I have to go there, the slavery days. Uh, when I mm -hmm. looked into my, uh, you have to remind me, I'm going to go off on a slight tangent here. Please because... go. Tangent away. Because <laughs> when I think about it, in my uh, ancestral, immediate ancestral parentage, my grandmothers, grandfathers on both sides, I didn't know much about my grandfathers on either side. Mm. But my grandmothers on my mother's side was from Panama. My father's side was an Indian in St. Lucia. Oh, really? So I'm thinking, okay, well, in that case, how does that relate me to slavery? Yeah. You know, I, I'm. Fair question. Uh, so there's a big chunk of, of my history that I'm still trying to find out about I, I don't know mm. but let me generalize now mm. and say that when I did start this particular journey and started to think how I can break it down especially to people who's not of our culture mm -hmm. um, how to explain to them why we are where we are how we think why we think mm -hmm. the way we think it had to come from and Americanism here but it mm -hmm. had to come from uh, the slavery aspect, the way our ancestors were brought over, the way they were deliberately removed from anything that gave them their power, specifically to undermine them, therefore they would be more submissive. So mm. that's a fact. I'm not harping on about slavery or no, blah, no, blah, no, blah. no, no. We have to know where we came from to understand why we are where we are. Yeah. And it's gotten to that point where after generation after generation after generation, we have taken into almost folklore. It's, it's mm. what we do. But why do we do it? Yeah, yeah, that's just how it is. Right. Have you ever heard this? Um, there was this sort of like anecdote that this uh, lady made this beautiful pot roast. And mm -hmm. every time she made the pot roast, she'd cut the top and bottom off the pot roast. Even Seems though, fair. you know. Yeah, yeah. sure. Cut the top. It's a nice presentation. Mm -hmm. So one day the kids said to the dad, why, why do we cut the top and bottom off he goes I don't mm. know let me ask my wife your mum so he there asked her she said I don't know my mum's always done it let me ask her mum so she asked her mum mum said I don't know that's the way gran always used to do it so they then asked guess what the answer was oh no I don't want to know why why <laughs> it was too big to fit in the pan oh. <laughs> That's and such that, a good analogy. <laughs> and suddenly, because I used to think, I remember at school going through my growing stages, I was, yeah. you know, we weren't allowed to put things on our hair and I would deliberately wear a headscarf. <laughs> this is my culture. Oh, Defiance. <laughs> yeah. oh, absolutely. <laughs> Why do we wear headscarves? Was it because they wanted to protect ourselves from the heat when we were in the West Indies? No. We had woolly hair to do mm. that. Yeah. So it was as far as I can make out, because mm. the mistresses didn't want our hair to be seen by the men, their men. Oh, it's seductive. Found it fascinating. Right. So they put that on us. It had nothing to do with us, of course. But this was their insecurity. And they would then say things like, the hair is ugly. You've got to hide your Perpetuate hair. Perpetuate it. Oh, so no. the, the man thinks, oh, actually, maybe it is ugly because the wife is just feeding him. Well, it didn't stop any men. But anyway, no, yeah. It didn't. <laughs> But the point being now is that we would wear headscarves and think, all right, it's a West Indian culture. We wear it in this way and yeah. we turn it that way and we put a knot there. Well, who's to say that's the reason why? It's Maybe it's, it's something we were given yeah. that we adopted 
and now it's part of our folklore and culture. It's so true. And it's it's a difficult one because it takes people like yourself doing the work to come forward with this kind of information. Because well, my problem is people in my generation, let's let's say the millennials, okay, the people that I'm seeing millennials that are doing educational hair content. Okay. Anyone who's not watching this, I have quotation marks on my hands right now. So my issue is there's not even a glimmer of cultural context. It's really just, I did this ponytail last night. It looks bomb. I'm going to show you how. That's the problem I have. It's people like you that are even attempting to tickle into that deeper area. And that deeper area is what's helping people like me understand why I treated my hair like garbage for the last 20 odd years. It's important. Yes. What do you yes. think has been the biggest lesson that you've learned as, a, as an educator or the biggest like, you know, a shock moment that resonates mm. where you're like, my God, talk to me about some of those scenarios. The biggest lesson Mm. The biggest lesson for me was that when I was growing up, I simply believed that there were some who had golden hands and there mm. were some who didn't. Some that was heavy handed, some that who weren't, some who had the knack, some didn't. Mm. The biggest lesson for me is that that is not true. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's another one of those tiny little insidious wormy things in the brain that make you think you can't do something. We can all that. do it. It's yeah. just that going back to the education, we were not taught. My mom wasn't taught. Her mother had a completely different hair type mm -hmm. and her sisters had hair similar to her mom's. My mom was the only one with curly Afro mm -hmm. hair, anything mm -hmm. that resembled like or see, you know, using the categories. Yeah, like the tighter the four, coils. Yeah. The tighter coil. Yeah. And even then it wasn't as tight. It's nowhere near as tight as mine. And then she had uh, her children. She had two girls out of a load of boys. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> my sister's hair was more like my mom's. So when okay. it came to doing my hair, why did that always hurt? Why did she not know what yeah. to do? Didn't she like me? Is it because my skin is darker than my sister? Mm -hmm. And all of these other little things that came in. Yeah. It's so important to understand. And it helped me to heal, actually. She didn't know. She wasn't taught. Her mom probably didn't have the time. You know, yeah. she was born in what, 1930-something? Life was hard back then. Back in I was going to say, I'm there sure. were things going on. <laughs> right? Right now, we're blessed to be in the time that yeah, we are because we, we are. can actually look around and think. This we is can why take time I to, to even think about these things in the first right. place. You're right. This is why I can look back at the things that I went through that I used to be very upset about. Mm -hmm. That I can now look back and say, well, actually, I, it gave me the moment to ask the question. So, yeah. Grateful. That's one of the problems that I've had. I know um, you've seen this. The video that I put on my Instagram a while back when I spoke to Rachma from 4C Ajabi and I was like, I think that it's genetics. Okay? You either can grow long hair or you can't because that's literally what I thought and that's all I knew growing up. There was either the mixed race girl at school um, or there was the black girl at school i.e. me and that was right. it. And you were yeah. born with it or you weren't. It, it that's as long as it grows, maybe, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's as long as it grows. It is only maybe in the last 18, I'm, I'm going to say 18 to 24 months, and that's really to push, okay? 18 to 24 months where I actively started seeing a large amount of Afro hair where people were doing all of this, and, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was horrified. I was like, what kind of voodoo is this? Because mm -hmm. I thought it was just here, here, mm -hmm. and then for the random black girl who's probably got like Indian in the blood way back when, it's here, and that's usually right. blacks. That's not right. even in its Afro state. So right. I have been ingrained to believe these things, and it takes real educators and real hard conversations <laughs> to drag you out of it because mm. we are so, I think, as a community of people, 
black people in particular, I think we're just constantly preyed upon. I think we're preyed upon frequently by a range of different people, whether it's for profit, whether it's so that people can get that diversity box ticked. But in actual fact, nobody's really teaching us anything. They're just utilizing us for whatever bottom line that they have, whilst we yeah. still are running around asking questions and buying products that don't work. So people like you are important to me because it helps to start breaking that narrative down and understanding why I do what I do and what the actual real result is that I can achieve. Mm -hmm. What type of people do you work with? And what kind of education? Because I know you kind of touched on the fact that it wasn't just practical. So talk to me about what these sessions look like. Okay. Um, the ones that I do the most of at the moment are geared towards my fellow makeup artists. In the industry, okay. I'm aware that, that especially in what we call the crowd room, and they, you know you've got a film and you've got loads of extras, mm. yeah? There is a specific makeup group of people who deal who take care of them okay. to make sure that they are uh, like you've got the costume department you've got the makeup department mm -hmm. um and uh, we've just got to make sure that they they look good for the, the period whatever time they're doing mm -hmm. um now usually when they come in with their natural hair most people don't know what to do and i'm telling you if you walk into a shop now you mm -hmm. wouldn't know what to buy even right yes there's like 10 different things to do the one thing so it's, it's kind of ridiculous so the most of my my um workshops are geared towards makeup artists and hairstylists who want to up their skills so that they can now go back into the tv set the film set production and say yes um i can do all of these bits and pieces and i know how to work with afro hair because there are people who say they do but you know that it's not it's not Again, I'm not blaming them. It's not their fault. They no. only know what they know or what they've been taught. And another reason why I became an educator is because I realized they were not necessarily taught the right thing. They were yeah. taught that aesthetic thing. And so people, I, I don't know if you saw last year, mm. there were lots of YouTube, um, not YouTube, the other one, Instagram. Instagram, yeah. TikTok and thingy things like people going through um fashion week and whatever starting with fairly nice normal long hair ish yes. and it's been straightened to death and they came out with it jagged and ragged yeah, and, and I did, I did. it was bad right now those are the makeup artists unfortunately those makeup artists are not the ones in my sphere mm. now either they think they uh don't need it what i don't know i'm not sure but when it comes to fashion shows, they, oh yeah, am I going to be shot? Probably going to be shot here. Um, but when it comes to fashion shows, they are usually, yeah. <laughs> they are usually, um, they would get makeup artists who are fairly new, mm -hmm. trainees, because, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be in a certain level and mm -hmm. be in a certain type of job in order to actually get really good money. Otherwise, yeah. uh, when, when you're newly out, it's, it's a hard slog to yeah. become established and known as a professional. Mm -hmm. um, so most of these people do not have experience. They don't really have great experience with makeup and they don't have great experience with hair. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna call this one out here as well. Okay. Um, the makeup industry providers uh, of training are mm -hmm. only now getting their act together for Afro hair training. It should be all hair training, Yeah, but because they can't get people to teach it because I guess people don't know the fundamentals that I yeah. know. They're still teaching something that people leave there thinking, I'm still not sure what I'm doing. And I've, I've had yeah. makeup artists come to me, um, come to my training and said, leaving saying, ah, I understand now, but it's only because I threw in all that history part yes. and all how the hair works. And then I, I literally make them do it on, on a human. I yes. do not train on mannequins. <laughs> I mean, I think in, in terms of the interpersonal connection between, yeah. say, me and the chair and this yeah. person, that's yeah. important. So, Which is why you. I insist on humans. We yeah. cannot do this on a mannequin. There is no way you can tug and not know what it feels like because you won't feel it. You're on the external. Yes. If, that, if you pull and that person says, actually, that is too much tension. Actually, that's mm -hmm. not enough. You know what? You're okay to go a bit stronger. So that's my how you learn. How would you learn if it was just a dead head? 
you can't no. it's impossible so I train makeup artists, hairstylists. I do do, I do do, I do train art. Sorry. It's okay. It's uh, funny. Parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carry on. Parents. Okay. The English language. Um, and individuals, people who like you and me at some mm -hmm. point thought, why is my hair difficult? Why don't I yeah. know what I'm doing? I'm, I'm, and I'm so grateful. I'm actually having people come up to me now and simply saying, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing. I want to be natural, but I don't know what I'm doing. No, a lot of people you know? don't, and that's all right. <laughs> exactly. First of all, that is okay because yeah. we are not taught this. We are not taught this. No, um, I've another reason gone through... why I wear my hair like completely natural as well. Yeah, yeah. Right, because I want to start that conversation. I walk down the road and they go, "Wow, what did you do? Tiny little rollers?" They're like, "No," and they're serious. They're, they're being 100% <laughs> serious. Tiny <laughs> mini rollers. Yeah. That's, that's, Did you that's, use yeah. the chopstick method? No. no. Completely natural. <laughs> oh, I wish I could do that with my hair. Well, you know what? You can. Yeah. And I do that deliberately. I don't have to wear my hair like this. Yeah. But actually, why not? Yeah. I, yeah, I've got to say this, actually, Paige. The reason say why it. I started. Right. So I'm, I've yeah. always been natural hair, everything. No problems yeah. with... Doing all manner of braid out, twist outs, plaits, twists, whatever. Mm. No problem mm. with it at all. But I, what I really wanted to do was mm -hmm. have a wash and go. And I'm there like with my little green eyes looking at the ladies with the, you know, the, the yeah, really curly, much. Lucy drop, drop thing. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been and there. I wanted to have a wash and go and I couldn't understand why it wasn't possible yeah and so I just started breaking my fingers through it and leaving sure. it and let it go wondering whether I needed to put gels in and I thought I really don't want to put gel in Blech. yeah I don't want to do that stuff never been a product person mm. and then all of a sudden slowly over weeks mm. but wetting my hair on a daily basis which I still do mm. my curls said oh I remember what to do because they'd been stretched out and dried out and whatever and straightened and platted and whatever. And in this yeah. dehydrated form, it actually loses its memory. So is, is it like muscle head. memory, like curl memory? Basically, yeah, curl memory. I've, I read Ooh. somewhere that people with very curly hair, whatever the curl pattern, it depends on the shape of the hair pore, I think, the, the yeah. Or as it grows out, mm. which then shapes the cuticle as it's formed, and etc. 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 And the way to get our hair straight would be to wet it a little bit, dehydrate mm. it, and flatten it. So you're flattening out those cuticles. Okay. So when you wet it now, it slowly starts to re remember yeah. its natural curl pattern. That's so cool. And this is what you get. What do you know? 4C girls can do wash and go. And obviously there are different types of 4C girl, 4C mm -hmm. girl pearls. Yeah. But with depending on the coil pattern now, you mm -hmm. can have one that looks like a rope, like a complete, like no air between the curl. Yeah. And like mine, you can have a little bit of air between the curl. So it, it's a little bit more defined. So I've got yeah. some that are completely like a string, a complete coil. Mm. And I've got some that are more loose. So it, it's just fascinating. It, it's fascinating. But the thing that I remember very recently, and this was kind of what helped me have the idea to talk about the natural hair movement on my Instagram a while back mm. and whether it failed, basically, right? And the reason was my mum was trying, as I had before when, when I had my hair completely natural and short, was trying to do the wash and go, but more trying to get a certain type of curl definition, right? And it just wasn't working. We were using a huge amount of products, loads of eco style gel, um, all of these curl butters and, and curl mousse and definition cream and all of this stuff to the point where both of our scalps at one point or another was cakey, full of product. We had to try and dry it and then it would be flaky uh. when it's dry. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm being completely mm. honest here, trying to get the curl definition that we saw on YouTube. We both looked on YouTube 
um, from it. yeah from the the natural hair movement girls and influencers yeah. and etc. And when I started doing the podcast and started getting real education, let's be frank, real education from people that really really know, immersing myself in all of the voices that I have been speaking to and and engaging with over the last six months. I was like, Mum, I don't think, I don't think that's our wash and go. You know, I don't think that's actually ours. I think that's for maybe the the three A girlies. I that's think we got this wrong, and we're forcing a curl definition that is it's not for our head to do. Yeah. And it's the first time where she was like, Oh my god, you might be right. But it's that what we see on the tutorials we follow and in an article that i read on refinery 29 about whether the natural hair movement had failed for 4c girls mm. it was like the natural hair movement seems to be enforcing high product based tutorials on curating a eurocentric curl that is not reminiscent of that of 4c hair and i, right. I have to say i feel that right uh, that you've just said everything it wasn't for us and mm -hmm. how does that made you how did that make you feel at the time that there was something isolated. wrong I genuinely isolated. was like I'm using the wrong products or I'm getting the tutorial wrong I got frustrated I cried sometimes it was, it was horrible yeah. yeah isolated um what was the term there was this term that really struck me um disconnected mm -hmm. disassociated it's like oh it's not for me there's nothing for me ah okay I was getting, I'm getting it wrong and all of my other black sisters are somehow getting this right and I'm getting this wrong. I'm an idiot. That's, that's awful. Mm, no that's one. That's how I felt. No one should feel that. No one should feel that. But what do you do? You and your mum, you woke up mm. to it. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when you have people who insist, no, 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 my hair is difficult. Yeah. No, no, no. My hair is so special that because none of those work on it, it means I'm a non-entity. I'm a non-person. Mm -hmm. You know what that does to a person's self-esteem? That's awful. It degrades. So, oh, my God. And we as kids take this from young. Mm -hmm. And we carry it into adulthood. And then people like you and me are the lucky ones who look around and say, well, why is that? Yeah. And there are some out there who simply think no. When I was working abroad last year, mm -hmm. my, um, my uh, makeup artist uh, colleague yeah. was commenting how much she likes, because I do this all the time now. I have been doing it for yeah. the last, uh, four or five years or something like mm -hmm. that, I think. And she was saying, oh, love you here like that. But my mother, my grandmother would look at mm -hmm. that and say, that's simply unkempt. You know, it's messy. You could go combing or whatever. Yeah. So, what do you do when that's the influence? I'm quite fortunate. Um, I don't have any of that negative talk around me, so I can pretty much do an experiment as I choose. Yeah. But there are some people out there who have the pressure of their family or their friends yeah. um, saying, well, what's wrong with your hair? Uh, I still get people saying, oh, your hair's really short. And I pull it out. It's down to my shoulder. Is it? <laughs> mm. If Is I it? so choose, if I so choose. <laughs> if I wish to, to let that. you know, okay? Right. Otherwise, it's none of your business, though. But if you must okay. know, it's not, and you're uneducated. Yeah. What would you say has been a success story? Like one that mm. sticks out in your head? Because you work with a lot of people, and yeah. I bet there's one or two where you just think, that's why I do this. Yes, there is. But I'm going to use... The first person before I even officially decided to be an Afro hair coach. Tell me. So um, there was it was my daughter's friend, and mm -hmm. her background history is that her mom has always relaxed her hair until she got to a point where she's like, you know, I I don't want to relax my hair anymore. I'm I, I'm done. Nice. I want to see my natural hair, yeah. but I don't know what to do with it. I don't know how to handle it. My mom always said it's so thick. So you know what? It's so thick. I don't yeah. know what to do. Yeah. And my daughter told her about me and mm. she came to me and said, oh, your daughter says that, you know, la, 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 la. and I thought, you know what, um, I, I have a theory mm. and I know what to do, but honestly, I haven't devised a way of sharing it with somebody yet. Yeah. Are you willing to, to, you know, be my first subject and go yeah. through this program and see how it does? And she goes, yes, okay, fine. So, <laughs> like I said, 
the practical side of it i can teach you i could mm. i could teach her um i can tell you right i could say Paige, you need to take a and put it onto b and then take d and mix it into c yeah step by step all right fine but it means nothing if you still think to yourself i can't do this oh my god there's so many steps how am i going to remember it that's cloud in the way so then it dawned mm -hmm. on me that i actually have to say to her okay let's let's talk about your hair history mm. what do you think of your hair what has other people said about your hair what does that make you feel about your hair yeah. now and so we started then i said right okay fine let me give you some facts about your hair and some facts about the messages that you were given and where mm. they came from mm -hmm. possibly she goes okay fine so I told her all of these things and she went, oh, oh, well, that makes sense. So when I said to her, right, okay, so when you're going to wash your hair now, because mm -hmm. you've always combed it out, so it always is in its most Afro, I'm going to use the word under advisement, tangled. Okay. There are certain languages, certain words I don't like using because it has a negative connotation. I feel so I'll, I'll okay. use it. I'll, well, it, our hair doesn't tangle. We have curls. They it just gets curly. It gets ravelly. It's just it, what it and does. We have to unravel. It's just what it does. Intertwine. <laughs> this is a nice one. Intertwined. Yeah. I like. So it was intertwined when she combed, combed yeah. it out. Oh, beautiful! Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm gonna keep that one. <laughs> and <laughs> so she would often comb her hair out and then say it's thick. Naturally, it's all been intertwined. Yes. She couldn't get her fingers through it. So I said, all right. So it's going to take some time before it settles down because technically speaking your hair has forgotten its curl pattern yeah when you're washing its hair but ish hair when you're washing your hair mm. water's running down onto your head however you're doing it take your fingers gently smooth the hair you're, you're effectively pulling it straight mm. and then raking your fingers through it and okay. you have to continue to do this so we did it as a three-day challenge mm. by the end of that she was like, wow, my hair is not as thick as I thought it was. It's not as unmanageable as I thought mm -hmm. it was. I still have to get used to it being in its shrunken state because yeah. everything, again, it's our mindset, out. we need to see the length. We need to see the length to have any sort of um, self-worth. Mm. So that was, there was many things she was taking on board at first. Mm. So some six to nine months later, this, this lady, mm -hmm. her name's Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. she was doing all the low level jobs you know kind of like down can't really see me so I'm like um when I say low level jobs she'll be a brand ambassador all right so you know the people who are giving out things on the street free butters oh! free cans of cokes yes. yes those sort of things so right they're, they're called brand ambassadors um it's yeah. not a low level job it's usually for actors or yes people who are doing other things or for those who just want to do little jobs because they don't necessarily feel yeah, confident fair. enough to do anything more. Yeah. So she would do all these different jobs. When I heard her, when we got back in touch with each other, maybe about a year later, mm. everything she did was effectively gold. Because she felt better within herself about her hair, mm -hmm. her natural abilities shone through. I don't actually believe anyone is really an introvert. I think it's an external um, manifestation of how they're feeling inside, whether yeah. they're feeling insecure or don't want to be seen. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you'd probably describe me as an extrovert or whatever, but I think I'm pretty much being myself. Yeah, but people say that day, about me, but mm, no, not really, no. but it depends on how I feel. Right, exactly. But we're kind of like taught that those feelings define us if you know what i mean so if mm -hmm. you're loud you must be an extrovert if you're quiet you must be an yeah. introvert no. or why can't you just say well actually i'm feeling like being quiet today yeah right so whatever was holding her back in her professional life yeah disappeared girl's now a manager hey yeah? and everything she does they take her out of that and give her another couple of levels higher she up she feels she feels that alignment she feels relaxed she feels it happened to me i get it as soon as i got these locks i was just well you've been seeing me just go from strength to strength and it's because i feel I have. free i feel free i have that confidence that connection your heart your soul and your hair your crown yes. is vital 
it's huge. <laughs> and we are taught, trained and educated to disconnect from it. Mm -hmm. They're given products that don't work. They work mm -hmm. for maybe a season. Maybe. Or a couple of weeks, if you're lucky. And then it stops working, which makes you dig down against yourself again. And then buy more. Again. Whereas they are designed to change your curl pattern, which makes it difficult for your hair to work. That's the way it works. Oh what do you gosh, think is coming from me this time? Oh, no, I was going to say biggest tip, biggest tip for us, because I'm still learning so much and I try and squeeze as much knowledge out of everybody as physically possible. So I, I need a tip, please. Okay. Tip. okay. Tip. My biggest tip. Yes. Is to ditch the comb and to ditch the products. Like, <laughs> my world I is crumbling around me. I'm like, oh my God, I feel sick. <laughs> okay, please exp explain. Uh, explain. All, all right. No um, products. I like natural products. Let's start okay. with the products. I like the coconut oil, the shea butter, the yeah. um, the the extra virgin olive oil. I like the almond oil. I like the, what's that other one? Castor oil. I, I love oils. Mm -hmm. now, I know most people think oils. I oh, know oils are awful. Depends on how you use them, yes. right? Depends on how you use them. What I love most about all of this natural stuff mm. is that there are no chemicals. There's nothing they're trying to alter my curl pattern. Mm -hmm. So why not use that? Yeah? So yeah. when your hair is damp, like I said, yeah. I wet my hair every morning. Mm -hmm. When my hair is wet, I would get my, my essential oil, my olive oil and my essential oils. I'd mix that together. Mm -hmm. And I smooth that onto my hair. That is my moisturizer. That's mm -hmm. my leave-in conditioner. It stops my hair from tangling and from knotting, tangling mm -hmm. and knotting, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it keeps it supple. It keeps it hydrated. The water is already on the hair shaft. Mm -hmm. And if you can imagine a pine cone, mm -hmm. the cuticles are open. So the water is now inside the, the hair shaft, okay? Yeah. The oil going down on top of that, as um, a protective coating, oil on water, it seals it in. So mm -hmm. my hair is not dry. Um, my hair is not brittle. My hair hasn't broken off in a very long time since I started okay. doing Okay. Don't have any problems with the ends. It knots, as in individual knots, because my yeah. hair is very curly. So okay. occasionally I get them, and yeah, maintenance. Trim that little bit okay. off and it's gone. Good tip. So, yes, yeah, so natural products. Yep. I prefer natural products. There is a company. Can I name brands on here? You can do whatever you want. Okay, thank you. In <laughs> fact, you had an interview with her already, so I know this is good. Um, Sky? Kareem? No. Are you trying to guess who it is? Yeah, I am. Uh, <laughs> Kareem, surely. Afro Af hair candy. Afro hair candy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my God, I love that product. I love it. They're good, aren't they? They're really very, good. very, very good. Especially the um, deep conditioner, which is in itself a shampoo. Mm -hmm. You don't need to see lather. <laughs> no lather necessary when you've got ginger and garlic in there, natural cleansers. I love all that stuff. So Agreed. Okay, so we're going to do natural. We're going to hydrate. Natural. And we're going to yes. use our essential oils so that yes. we can lock that hydration in. Okay. But yes. that's actually like three or four tips. Now explain to me about the comb situation, Miss Thing. <laughs> okay. Okay. So most times when we do our hair, we've um, learned to dry our hair, prepare our hair, blah, blah, blah. Now you need a comb to comb it out to detangle yes. it. Right? Yes. Actually, you unravel your hair when it is wet. Okay. So you're in the shower, this stroking motion that I was talking to you about. Yeah. How can I explain it simply? So our hair is curly. It is. If you straighten out the curl, mm -hmm. right, and then smooth your hand down the hair shaft, mm -hmm. what is a twist of curls mm -hmm. means you kind of unravel them and have them lie in it. It lies flat, right? Okay. So why do you need a comb if you've just unraveled your hair? Unnecessary. Your hair I'm now no alive. longer has... <laughs> Your hair now now no longer has any tangles in it. There's nothing to 
undo. Once you comb it out now, what was that mm. beautiful word you used? Entwined? And yeah. All those yeah. individual curls become yes. entwined. <laughs> and then you need a comb to break it out and then you're and Okay. And, that just makes sense. Right? So yes. Eliminate the the mm, that motion when you're washing so, your hair you know when you're kind Smooth of like instead. when you're doing the i think people do it because we're used to for some reason trying to lather trying to get the yeah. soap i think that. yeah and again well, do you know why we do that no <laughs> we do that because we put stuff on our hair that we have to remove all the, oh the God, time yeah. that you described when you and your mom were going through the different oh. gels and the flaking yeah, yeah. They created a shampoo, a sulfate specific mm. to remove the heavy oil, the heavy grease, whatever else have you on the hair. One of my hair models, um, uh, and a, a lovely chap, mm. he was going to an uh, event and he went to a hairdresser's. And have you heard of this stuff called, I think it's called gummy? Oh, it's really, of. it's really, it's like the strongest type of edge control thing yes, you've I ever have, seen I in have. your life it's right? like gorilla glue it's like a something similar like vibe that. yeah something right like that, yeah. now can you imagine that once it's dried onto the hair so his hair at one point was nice and you know fluidy and nicely mm -hmm. absorbent it gets wet you can see it shrink back up and all of that sort of stuff mm. so nothing on the cuticle mm. he came back after this uh event that he went to and he oh, said God. to me and i'm not sure what's happening but my hair doesn't seem to be absorbent anymore and I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, am I learning something new here? Have have I this this idea I have of water and oil being it? Am I yeah. wrong? Yeah. But no. Uh, apparently, they had used this stuff to get that beautiful, crisp, flat twist thing, and he took it out. And because it had been on for so long, it, it had become a case on his hair. So every oh, time he comes to me now, I'm having to use a clarifying shampoo, something that lathers and strips the hair so that I can try and slowly chip away of this stuff to get it off. It's, like, it's now like a shell on but his that hair. That makes sense. But then I think we've, when we don't have that kind of heavy product on it, we're still doing it. <laughs> exactly. And so and we're destroying the natural sebum that comes from our hair. It yeah. dries it out. Suddenly it's flaky. Suddenly our hair's not responding well because of very curly hair whatever oils were on it we've just taken it off so it feels rough and yeah sticky and you know doesn't blow nicely next to its brothers and sisters in the head and whatever <laughs> it's because of that and yeah. again why do we think lathering is good look at all the adverts we see People i was thinking that lathers. well even as like a five-year-old watching tv and seeing a head and shoulders advert where there's a blonde lady doing the lather up and then it just kind of is just in my head then, isn't it? So even right. when I go in the shower, I'm, that's just what I'm doing because I saw it on TV. Right. So you see the re-education starts from, like, we, we have to see what it is and understand that it's not for us. And then forgive ourselves because it's okay. We're in a society where it's nothing's good for us. Nothing. Yeah, literally. I got told and the so, other day not to have salt. I was like, you, you can have no salt on your food. Okay, <laughs> everything is going to kill me anyway. I'm gonna have salt on my rice. You know? <laughs> no, right. But it's true. Everything is stressful. So this is why I think we do need to invest more in educators like yourself and take time to go and see educators like yourself because otherwise we're just going to perpetuate this cycle. And then when we have children, it will carry on, and it's just going to be a bloody nightmare. And everyone's going to end up bald with flaky scalps. And it's not going to look cute. It won't look cute. I'm laughing. It's it, that's because it's a nightmare scenario. Um, Literally, let's not. Let's not. Okay. Right. If anybody, this is why to... I educate parents as well because yeah, it okay. starts from there. Yeah, it really, really does. And I want to make sure that I'm highlighting you so people can come to you. Please tell people. I've obviously, for those of you that are watching, I've already done my research. But for those that are listening, Angela, how can people come and finally learn what they're doing <laughs> with okay. their hair? Well, my website is afrohaircoach.com. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank <laughs> and you. I'm on Instagram as afrohaircoach. And um, I'm also on LinkedIn. 
That's another route so, you'll go for. Okay. Ah, yeah, because I want to reach the educators themselves. Somebody yeah, needs true. to reach the educators. Otherwise, you know, I'm, it's a drop in the ocean. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> What's your full name? My full name is Angela Stewart, S-T-E-W-A-R-T. Fab. And all of this will be on the Tech Talks website anyway. But I'd just like to make sure I cover all bases, okay? Yeah. I need to make sure people can find you. This has been so insightful and so helpful. Thank you so much for joining me, Angela. This has been awesome. Pleasure. Been waiting Amazing. for this for months. No, I know. So same, excited. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, 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 was, it was a good... Wait. It's a good so, wait. Well, you know, anything yeah. worth having is worth waiting for. That's what they right, say. Right, right. Okay, Thanks fabulous. Again, well, but it's okay. And for everybody that was listening, I hope that was helpful for you as well. In the meantime, tighten your bonnets, oil your scalps, and protect your edges. And I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.